I Dave Adams here, and this is not a Christmas message. Uh, I've done a few of them already this Christmas for uh, Dice Tower and a, a few other place people, but um, to be honest, I've, I find it a little bit weird. I mean, in all honesty, why would you want to click on a video of just multiple people saying Merry Christmas? Um, I, just, I, it just, I know it seems like we have to do it, uh, but I find it a little bit weird because to be honest, it's Christmas Day, it's New Year's Day, it's New Year's Eve, whatever. Uh, it's any day of the week, and I don't think I'm going to watch three minutes of people just wishing me Merry Christmas. So I'm not doing that for you now. I'm not wishing you Merry Christmas. I don't care how lovely it was. Uh, it doesn't matter whether I, I, I wanted you to have a wonderful time with your family or not. Uh, no, all of that is irrelevant. It's all irrelevant. Forget it. Forget that I even cared or even took an interest in how your Christmas went or how your New Year's is going to go. So don't don't worry about it because I don't care. Honestly, I, you know, not even interested. But uh, I, did, I did want to give a message and I wanted to talk and I, I suppose reflect upon, like it's New Year's time. Like we, we do New Year's resolutions for a reason. And I, I actually think they're a good thing because they get us thinking, they get us uh, really sort of, thinking about our lives a little bit more deeply and a little bit, you know, being invested in what we're doing and trying to be intentional in our planning. So um, it's not that I sit down and make New Year's resolutions, but I do try to goal set and plan at this time of year, um, just in keeping with that whole ethos or, or the theme, I think, of, of what the year offers or what that time of year offers, this time of year offers really. Um, and I have been thinking a lot about it because when I think about this year, and the year that has been, um, you know, despite all the celebrity deaths, the, the absolute craziness of this week, like as a nerd, I'm devastated by Kerry Fisher passing. I'm devastated by Debbie Reynolds um, passing just a few days afterwards. Uh, you know, like I'm devastated by George Michael. One of my favorite albums is Older by George Michael. I, I ardently tried to get that as a kid or as a teenager. Because I, I, I love the album so much and I got it and I loved it. It's brilliant. It's one that's really stuck with me. And so, you know, losing such an artist is, is devastating. Um, but it's, you know, despite all of that, I've actually, I actually feel that this year is one of the first times I've gotten to the year and I've felt proud of what I've achieved this year. I really feel like I've actually accomplished things uh, this year. And I don't just mean in another year with the family um, or even another year at work. I mean, some years have really just been, I've survived. And I, I recall the last few years actually thinking, you know, that I'm just glad the year is over. They were just horrible years. And I think in part, when I think about that, it's in part because I wasn't really working towards anything. Um, and I had nothing I could really point to to say that I made the year special. But what I could point out was a whole bunch of horrible things that went wrong. Um, and in some parts, I wonder if that's just about the inactivity, like the, the fact that I wasn't working hard towards anything. This year, I've worked harder than I think I've ever have in my life. Um, and simply because uh, I, I really set out with a goal and, and a vision. And um, part of that vision was to, to really work towards becoming or, or working towards game design. Um, and so, you know, like my, my days have been exhausting. I've... I would go to work early, um, you know, and some nights they're not great nights if Clara's, you know, not sleeping well or if she, when she's been getting teeth. We've had some really horrible nights, but regardless, it's been a matter of I get up, I go to work, I come home, I spend time with the family uh, in the afternoons, or, you know, sometimes it's extracurricular after school as well. Um, but, uh, you know, and then I have to, you know, I'd, I'd either cook dinner or I'd clean up after dinner, as, regardless of what, whatever I'm cleaning up. Um, you know, get Clara to bed, spend some time with my wife, like watching a show or something, whatever it is. Um, but as soon as she went to bed at 9, 9.30, uh, I'd be up, I'd be working, I'd be writing journal article, writing articles for, for Game of Palooza, I'd be editing video, um, video which I'd, had, I'd have to shoot whatever spare time I could find at work, whether it's uh, lunch breaks or, or a spare period or after, after school, you know, uh, in the midst of kids 
walking past yelling out or kids talking out the front of my door or cleaners coming through. So um, constant frustration from those things. But at the same time, uh, and, and tiredness, like I, I'd work from uh, 9.30, if I'd start working at 9.30, I'd work through to uh, at least uh, 11, 30, 12, but especially towards like the second half of the year, um, especially with reports coming in and, and, and uh, marking for subject areas, I'd be working through till 1.32 in the morning uh, and then getting up at 6, 5.30, 6, depending, um, and doing it all again. Um, so I've, I've been sleep deprived, I've been exhausted, um, but I felt good about it, like really genuinely, deeply good about the work that I've been doing, um, most of which I'm not getting paid for. Um, it's more satisfying than any time in my life, I feel like, in terms of my productivity and what I feel about my effort and my contribution and what I'm doing. So I felt really happy and really good about uh, what I've been doing. Uh, I've, I felt like I've been tapping into my creative juices. I've been learning heaps about game design. I've been studying design, the design process, design thinking, um, and it's been really meaningful for me, uh, and I've loved it. As I've gotten to the end of the year, I can look back and I can say there's a whole series of things I'm really grateful for, um, and you know, certain achievements for sure, like uh, growing my Instagram account to, uh, you know, uh, over over 1,200 people so far. You know, we're, we're coming to Christmas, and I'm like four or five people off. Uh, sorry, coming into the new year, and I'm about four or five people off. Um, 1,300, which, you know, like, I, I don't do photography. I, I find it hilarious that people follow my Instagram account because I don't get photography. I'm not a good, uh, I, I don't take good photos at all, but um, but I'm connecting with the community. I'm building community networks. I'm, I'm talking to people. I'm getting involved. Um, and it's good. It's meaningful um, for me. And, you know, like the other things like starting a YouTube channel like and genuinely committing to releasing videos um, I set up the challenge halfway through the year to do the now weekly the nerds of wisdom weekly simply so that I've got that weekly output of something and I've stuck to it and I've committed to it and it's been hard and it's been challenging in some weeks it hasn't worked out the way I would and I've learned heaps about preparation and editing and I've just learned so much about that like I didn't know how to edit before uh, this year, and I started to edit, you, you go back and you look at my first few videos of Core Mechanic, which are the first videos I released, and the editing is, is way sloppier, it's slower, the, the, even the presentation style is, is, is different, um, and while I'm not necessarily, I don't think I've made it in any means, I think I'm still learning a lot of the process, and I'm still learning a lot of the, the technique, um, I've been really observing, really paying attention to other presenters and other reviewers and I've been trying to develop my own voice and all that in how I review um, especially with the core mechanic which is really about uh, taking up that challenge that that uh, it wasn't a challenge that Mike Selink has set per se but in his discussion he, he la listed you know 100 games which you absolutely positively must know how to play and while I realized I wasn't going to be able to do um, all the video games. I could possibly do mo most, if not all, of the, the board games. And so that was the challenge, was to play those with the intent of trying to see, well, what actually inspires a designer like Mike Selinker, um, who simply is one of the best, I feel. Like, I, he's great in the community. Um, and then trying to understand that and, and adapt it and see where it could lead. And I've, my, my learning has just gone through the roof. And for me, the question is, well, how do I keep pushing myself and growing? I've been doing lots of research into character development of grit and grittiness. I've been looking at um, developing uh, meaningful practice, you know, and reading books on, by Anders Ericsson. I've been um, doing a lot of reading as well as a lot of practical expression of doing stuff. Uh, also, in that, you know, we've got just over 100 subscribers now. We, we've just hit the 100 subscriber mark on YouTube, which isn't a lot um, but it's progress and it's little stages of progress every time little milestones which I'm really um, pleased or pleased with so those sorts of things have been really really happy with 
and you know then to get invited to be a part of instagamers to to get onto the dice tower um, and have a regular segment there and to really commit to making those things work and those things happen um, where goals just to push me uh, in terms of my engagement with the community and getting myself out there. I'm not really good at self-promotion stuff. It's not something I'm strong at, but I'm really grateful for it. I'm really grateful for those opportunities. And the challenge for me this, as I come into this reflection time, is that there's there's a couple of things. Firstly, in, in terms of my gratitude, you know, I'm grateful for achieving those things. But there's a couple of people I'm, I'm exceedingly grateful for. First one is Angela from Game of Palooza, who has just been so supportive. Um, she took on me when, you know, she, she'd had any number of writers come along and kind of let her down. Um, but she remained open. Um, she, she was invited, she invited me to, to be a part of the team. Um, and since then, she's just been incredibly supportive. Um, and she's an amazing, you know, she's amazing at what she does. Uh, she's a great editor. She's, she's, does wonderful work on the website, does wonderful work on her own YouTube channel. Um, and just, I, I'm really impressed by her work and to have someone like that uh, throwing her support behind me and encouraging me is, is really humbling as well as uh, incredibly encouraging and it makes me enthusiastic to keep doing it, knowing that there's people like that uh, who value me as well as um, people who I respect and what they do as well. Like I really respect what she does. The other person I'm exceedingly grateful for is, is Ricky, um, who got on board and helped get things started. Had to move to Sydney, but kept in touch, kept things active, kept things working, kept supporting me and came back and has just been a huge support. Um, and not just that, but also uh, quite frankly, one of my closest friends, uh, an absolute wonderful, guy who I, I deeply care and, and respect and I it's I don't think you realize just all those things I listed all those achievements those things that we've achieved uh, uh, that, I, that I've talked about it as things I'm really grateful for most of which wouldn't happen without Ricky and I, I don't think I could express like just how he's helped make this a successful year for me and I hope in the process that he's uh, found it enjoyable and, and, and a good year for him as well, you know, and um, I don't think I couldn't have done it without him. I, this year just wouldn't have happened and I wouldn't be so happy this at the end of the year knowing that, well, without his help and support and without his skills, um, the big thing that he offers me other than all of his support and, and, you know, it's his camera we film on, it's his sound equipment um, and he just fronts that up and he, he just throws his faith behind what, what's going what we're doing which is why i'm happy why i like to use the term we when we're when i'm talking about uh, nerds of wisdom but the the way he challenges me as a thinker you know i mean i we released our our criticisms of pandemic legacy and and maybe we're probably even going to release some more on another game but we've also released a lot of really positive um uplifting content, really uh, engaging content. And the thing is that no matter, even when I, like I get pretty down on some games, like just I, I don't enjoy the experience or, you know, I'm trying to learn Magic the Gathering. That's been really hard, but he really pushes me and he makes me think. And even when I come out with something negative, he will push me to justify that. And he'll say, and he, he'll question me. And I like that. Like it, he doesn't let me off the hook on anything I say. Um, and he really pushes me to think more deeply and to think more. He comes up with solutions and problems and he, he finds ways around things and he's quite happy having a different opinion to me. And that all matters as far as I'm concerned. As someone to work with, um, I couldn't be happier having Ricky around. So I'm, I'm really grateful for Ricky. Um, but it does raise some big questions for this year. Like, what am I going to do this year? And I, I think the process, one of the things that's really hitting on me is I've started doing all these things and getting involved in all these things, but it's really time consuming and it's hard and it's exhausting. Um, and the question is, is it sustainable? Well, you know, I think my energy levels, yeah, like I, I, I get enthused by doing this. I love getting an article into Game of Palooza. I, I love the energy I get from posting content. 
but that's not necessarily getting me to my goal. And the goal was game design. The game, the, the goal was game development. Um, and so I wonder if, well, if that's the goal, I'm, I've not been like this last half of the year. I've barely been doing any research into games, mostly because um, I'm just so busy editing. So most nights I'd be editing, uh, getting articles written, and I need to do the review stuff. I need to do the, the, the articles for Game of Palooza because it gets me thinking about games and it's vital to me understanding games more, more deeply and presenting that thinking to an audience for critique, for that public uh, critique. And it, it, it feeds back to me. Sorry for the really weird edit um, cut. Uh, change of location, change of lighting. Um, I, I uh, had to rush off and help my daughter with, uh, well, dinner and bed, really. So, yeah, that happens. But that, I mean, that's one of just one of the issues that I've I've been finding with this whole process as well is trying to find uh, consistent times to record or consistent places to record where it's quiet or I've got the availability. So, it's one of the challenges I've had, and this is the sort of sort of thing that happens sometimes. Um, but yeah, so look, I've, I really feel the need to keep doing things like Game of Palooza, but I need to question everything, really. I need to, I mean, the idea of doing reviews, um, is about me analysing and breaking down games for the purposes of understanding what makes a good game. So the core mechanic was all about that process, and it's all about leading us towards that 100th game, which is a game that you've designed. Um, and so that's what I want to do, like, I want to... Uh, go for a game that I've designed and you know this year we've been working towards a couple of game designs like Ricky and I've really been uh, doing some prototyping doing some uh, a lot of design work um, but I really feel that there's a whole stage of the process that we need to go through and that is uh, sending stuff off to publishers and sending stuff off to, to get edited uh, or to get looked at by professionals um, and as well as going through the prototyping with friends and family and people we don't know and getting feedback that way. I'm not expecting uh, to actually be a great designer to begin with. I'm just hoping to make a good game that might get published. Um, and I don't even expect the first game to get published or even the first submission. Um, it's just a matter of part of the process is getting that critical feedback. It's listening to professionals and experts in the industry. It's learning where you're going wrong. It's hearing, you know, finding all of those things that you overlooked and perhaps even all your friends overlooked when they were looking at the game because they're looking at it through, you know, um, friendship glasses. But it, it's getting those it's going through those key moments of being rejected, uh, of getting uh, told no, or even just getting told it's not good enough. Experiencing that, learning how to move, come back from that, learning how to turn that around, um, learning how to listen and to learn. So there are a couple of key skills I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking at trying to build this year. So really like some of our goal planning for this year is uh, literally just try and get a game ready to send to a publisher and to, to do that. Um, we've got a couple of games now, um, one in particular which I'm really happy with, uh, that we, I'm going to start, I'm going to make a new prototype for and try and do something just a little bit fancier, um, so that'll be good. And other than that, then uh, I suppose there's also just looking at, well, what's going to help us get to those, get to that key learning done. And so, does that mean that I have to cut back on Dice Tower? I love Dice Tower. I love the guys there. But um, if it's not helping me to achieve what we set out to achieve, then I really need to question why am I doing it? Um, do I need to do the weekly vlog now? I, I really feel I've, I've set that agenda and, and lived up to it. But maybe I can just alternate core mechanic and weekly vlog. I don't know. There, there are ideas I'm tossing around. Simply because it's about trying to push towards that end goal um, of design thinking of publishing uh, and working with and, and developing a game so I mean that's really at the heart of what we're doing and I, I didn't set out to be a youtuber I didn't set out to be uh, a, uh, I didn't set out to be a game reviewer I did this to try and learn design um, and that's what I want to focus on and this year more than any year I want to really make that happen uh, and so I'm, I'm, I love doing these things uh, I feel rewarded for it. I love the community, but I've got to stay true to what I've what, what I've set out to do. Um, 
you know, and the best part is, is the whole whole process so far I've been able to share with my mate Ricky. Uh, I've met some really great people on the way, and that's been great, and it's been really meaningful for me. Um, I just really enjoyed this year for that reason. More than work, it's more fulfilling than, than anything I've ever done at work. Um, you know, anything, any other project I've tried to do, any study I've tried to do, this is self-directed study. It's not as good as university level study, but, you know, I'm doing my best to, to get a high standard there. And I'm, I'm loving it. So I'm going to keep trying. And I'm going to keep trying to do what I'm doing and see what I'm able to commit to and set setting goal and set some goals really firmly this year and see what we can achieve. But... I really thank you for coming on this journey with me. I, I thank you for, for getting involved and for your comments and for your feedback, for watching the videos and, and taking an interest and uh, and uh, just for joining us on this on this roller coaster ride. It's been fun. Uh, I look forward to more this year. I'm sure this year is going to be exciting and just as great. And we're gonna have, we're gonna really sit down and do some things. So what? Check out this week's. Um, you know, weekly, as I said, it's uh, it's you know we, we're doing our best of for 2016, the best games we played. Um, you know, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too. Get involved, throw down your ideas on what what are the best games you played. Uh, I'm getting close to saying what I think the best game of 2016 is, but I've got to play one or two more games. I've got to play Adrenaline, and I want to play uh, Oceanus, definitely. Um, before I make a final decision on specifically 2016 games. But I'm also looking forward to next year. Until then, look, thank you for watching. Thanks for paying attention. Thanks for being here. Have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year. Have all those things. Whatever, whatever it is you're celebrating, just make it a good one. Thanks for watching. Until then, next time, I'm Dave Adams, and I'm just thinking out loud.